Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 21 of season 5 of the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we're here back for the penultimate race of the year. It's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now obviously of course if you guys are still interested in voting for our teammate for next season, uh, there is still currently a driver vote going on over on the community tab on the channel. Head over there, it is a few polls down now, I've been starting to do a lot more uh, polls recently obviously, to get your guys sort of interest on a few different topics around the world of Formula 1. But the four options are Charles Leclerc, Valtteri Bottas, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly ready for the final shortened season of this My Team Career mode. So obviously yeah, make sure you get your say in. The votes will close at the start of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, uh, which will be going live in just a few days time. So make sure if you haven't already, you get yourself voting for our, uh, for our teammate for the final campaign here on F1 2020. But obviously, if you guys are new around here as well, please make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well. If you do go on to enjoy the content, it really does help us out. A massive, massive thank you uh, for the continued support on the channel as well. We've now hit 14,400 subscribers. Uh, the growth recently has been absolutely insane. So yeah, massive, massive thank you. Obviously, we're trying to get as close as we can to 15k at the moment, so if you could help us get one step closer to that, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But yeah, let's dive in then here to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the place where heroes and history are made. It's where the 2008 title was decided in the final corner. And it's the place, a year later, that Jensen Button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only driver's championship. It's into Lagos and it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos, where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical sector two, where getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast, so they'll be disappointed, won't they? It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the start lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Gasly, Daniel Kvyat and Albon, Leclerc, Ocon, Norris and Lance Stroll, Perez, Joe, Lewis Hamilton and Raikkonen, King, Matsushita, Nicholas Latifi, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Sainz, Magnussen, De Vries, and Mr. Monaco. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, we've already won the championship, so relax and enjoy this race. Once again then, the team finally getting the idea of why we're starting at the back of the grid. Crofty and Anthony Davidson might not quite be aware or have got the memo so far though as we head in towards this Brazilian Grand Prix, but for this one, we're actually starting right at the very back. We've had so many races recently where we've been aiming to start from the back and just haven't uh, for whatever reason. But strategy today, though, I'm going to try and do medium softs if possible. I'm not really too sure if it's a viable strategy at all, uh, but, but we're going to give it a go uh, nonetheless, obviously. Safety cars might come into it. They have helped us out in a couple of times in recent Grand Prix as well, but obviously we'll wait and see as to what happens here. Obviously, some iconic Brazilian Grand Prix have gone down over the last 10, 15 years or so, and maybe, just maybe, today can be another one of those as well. Then, ready on the grid for round 21 of the year from the Brazilian Grand Prix. It is going to be five red lights. And it is lights out. And away we go for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Off to a pretty clean little start, actually, as we head down towards turn one. Won't be too aggressive, but we'll try to sneak up the inside of a couple of cars if possible. There, Roman Grosjean on the inside. Obviously, took his very first... Oh, no, it's Magnussen. I was about to say Roman Grosjean took his very first pole position in IndyCar, but of course, he's not on the Formula 1 grid anymore in this career mode. I'm pretty certain he went a long time ago, as we've already got past Carlos Sainz as well at the start of this Grand Prix. Let's just wait and see what we can do as we head up the hill there. Looks like Max Verstappen has actually taken the lead 
here in Brazil, which is a good start for our teammate. He's had an incredibly quiet season. He has already decided he won't be continuing with 2-2 two two Motorsport next year. Obviously, hence why we've got a driver pole ready for Season 6. But could he finally go back, finish this season on a bit of a high, show other teams his worth still? I'd be surprised if he doesn't go back to Red Bull. But seeing that, he has been a bit round the grid in this career mode. We could end up seeing him somewhere like Mercedes. There's a couple of rumours that he might end up there, or maybe even Alpha Tauri. Who have been strong this year. There is our Matsushita. What was that? As we head through the final couple of corners of lap one. It is our teammate Max Verstappen who leads the way. Ahead of I think George Russell there and Pierre Gasly. Uh, but as we come towards the end of lap one. We're closing in on Antonio Giovinazzi. Let's have a look. Nope we definitely aren't close enough to go for anything there. Let's all be real here. We both well know that. A lot of the overtakes in this Grand Prix are going to be out of Jung Sao down the start finish straight. So, I think, yeah, well, there's going to be a lot of this going on in the Grand Prix. Verstappen, another new fastest lap, though, as we close up to the back of Giovinazzi. He's going to force us to the outside as we head back up towards the start finish line. But we are up into 17th place of the Grand Prix. DRS has now been enabled as well, which should make moves a little bit easier. Jordan King, though, opt in for the same strategy as myself, starting on the mediums. Let's see what he can do in this race. Always is quite crazy when you look back at the caliber of drivers we've had as teammates in the My Team career mode. You've got definite future world champions in the likes of George Russell there. We've had Hamilton, we've had Max Verstappen, we've had as well, of course, uh, yeah, did. Jordan King, a, a man of many talents, I, I, I guess. I mean, he's been able to hold on to a Formula One drive, but not really sure how in this series, I'll be honest. Right, come on then, Latifi. Let's try and get past the last of the backmarker cars then in this Grand Prix. Then we might have a couple of laps of clear air, to be honest, because Raikkonen... A couple of seconds up the road already, but yeah, with DRS, this makes things a whole lot easier as we go right around the outside of the Williams man. 2.1 to Raikkonen up the road, though. Can't imagine it's going to be long before we close up to him. He's actually battling with Lewis Hamilton, something we haven't seen often in the world of Formula 1 in recent years. Right, lap seven then, all over the back now of the midfield. That was a lot of wheel spin as we head out of Jung Sao, though. Can we try and get a run on Kimi Raikkonen as we head back up towards the start-finish line? It's going to be a little bit more difficult now. A lot of these guys are getting slipstream and DRS from each other. 220 miles an hour, though, as we have a look at the inside. Come on, Kimi. It was a bit of a lunge, but we were there for quite a while, and he still decided to turn in. Team thought it was a good move, though, still, which is always a good thing. Is Izzy going to try and come back at us here? Kimi Raikkonen going to have a look. Oh, we go way too deep on the brakes, but we get it slowed down somehow and just so I get it hooked up on the exit. That being said, Kimi's still looking. No, he's not. But we're all over the road. Where are we off? This is... Oh, my Kimi! Mate! Man's got no chill. Fair play to him for still going at it, but we finally made the move stick. Right, next up then, Lewis Hamilton, as we head back down towards Turn 1, ticking over onto lap 10 of the Grand Prix. Somehow, new fast lap of the race, not too sure we've managed that. Yes, the medium tyres really starting to come into their own now against the softs, and obviously a bit of clear air, and then some DRS at the perfect time. As we head back down in towards Turn 4, though, are we going to be able to go for anything? Oh, Hamilton a little bit earlier on the brakes than I expected him to be. But no move going there. We'll see what happens as we head down towards the lowest point of the track. Back up the hill, though. Yeah, just not close enough this time round. Right, heading back out of Jung Sao. Then Ferrari have actually yeah, got a very, very quick car down the straight still. And especially, obviously, with some DRS assistance from Guan Yu Zhou just in front of him. Lewis Hamilton, not the easiest man to overtake in this race. We will still sneak to the inside, however. So we head back down towards Turn 1. Team recommending new strategy as well as we do make the move stick. What are the team now going to say? Uh, they're saying pit lap 21, so they want us actually yeah, now to go on to the one stop. Another 10 laps on these mediums doesn't seem too bad at the moment, and hopefully it can leapfrog us towards the front of the field. As trying to get through the rest of this mid pack is going to be tough. Now let's see what Guan Yu Zhou's got in the back of that racing point car as we head out of the final couple of turns. Had a pretty quiet start to his Formula 1 career. Hasn't been bad by any stretch, just yeah, hasn't really had any notable results either. So we head back down towards turn one. At the inside of Guan Yu Zhou, much better spatial awareness than Kimi Raikkonen. And we're to 12. Are we going to be close enough to Sergio Perez as we head back down towards turn one? We've got our first pitters as well. As we reach the end of lap 12 here, so we are now going to be up to the points of the Grand Prix. Not close enough to Perez. 
So they'll throw anything back in towards turn one. Can we try and get a good run though through the center S down in towards turn four? We might be able to go for something down here. Are we going to be able to have a look? Yes, we do. Purple in sector one as well. We give Perez the room on the eighth side. I'm running to eighth. Once we get through this midfield pack though, hopefully, then with some clear air we can really fly. Right, are we going to see a lot more cars into the pits for Stappen? And I think Russell have opted to stay out in this Grand Prix. But a few more guys have peeled in. We're going to see Lando Norris and Esteban Ocon in as well as Stroll stays out for another lap in this Grand Prix. It's actually Bottas that's come in onto a set of hard tyres to try and get himself to the end of the Grand Prix. Hopefully we can get Stroll this lap. I would have thought, though, that the last three cars in front of us are all now going to pit. We head around lap 14, though. I've just noticed George Russell is actually on a set of the medium tyres here. So him and... Well, I know he definitely has. Has Verstappen as well. Starting on a set of mediums in this Grand Prix to try and go a little bit longer in the first stint there. And how on earth have they both been able to maintain that ahead of all the soft runners there? Verstappen stays out another lap. Sets a new fastest for the Grand Prix the on a 107-1. We are going to close in on Lance Stroll, who's going to again stay out for another lap here. So Stroll really looking after his tyres early on in this Grand Prix. We just go two hundredths of a second slower than our teammate. Up the inside of Stroll, however. But up into P3. But yeah, look at that. Verstappen and Russell, both on a set of mediums in this Grand Prix. So they might be trying to do the same strat as us. Or they might have to go medium hards if they can't stretch them far enough. We, however, now have got clear air. And we're going to enjoy it. As soon as I say that, Verstappen and Russell into the pits. So they are almost definitely going medium hards in this Grand Prix. We need to try and get ours about another six, five, six laps if we want to try and get the softs to the end. Which might be quite a tall order there. But I mean, Stroll and Guan Yu Zhou are able to go 15, 16 laps on theirs as we now inherit the lead of this Brazilian Grand Prix. 21 to go. As Stroll and Zhou have stayed out for another lap. What on earth are Racing Point done? To give their cars such good tyre wear. Surely now we're going to see one of those racing points into the pit lane. Yes, Guan Yu Zhou finally into the pits. But the fact that Stroll can take those tyres pretty much half a Grand Prix does fill me with confidence for the second half. I think we're probably going to come in end of lap 20 onto a set of these uh, soft compound tyres. We've then got to basically make up, I think, about 12 seconds, I want to say, to the front runners. And over 16 laps with two grade softer tyres that should or at least be close certainly going to make the second half of this race interesting I'm not sure the hard tyres are working particularly well for Verstappen and Rolls Russell behind us oh, we've still pulled out another couple of tents over our teammate there but then again our medium pace is still really good at the moment still setting really low 107s lap after lap a little bit wide through the centre S but that's okay and especially now, if Verstappen and Russell start battling it out, which are two tenths between them. Gasly's right there as well, of course. Three different cars from three different teams duking it out. Surely this can only help us. There we go. Verstappen and Russell duking it out behind us. This is not helping them. They've already lost about a second through the first couple of corners. As Russell does seem to have got the move done on our teammates. Gasly's right there still trying to come at him as well. This is working beautifully for us. But we are going to box in the end of this lap and try and get those soft compound tyres 15 laps to the flag. Right, round in Jung Sao then. You can see Verstappen dropped all the way down to fourth place there. As Russell seemed to really make that move work for him. Got Gasly between them as well as we are now heading into the pit lane. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidy. Thank you very much. As George Russell, yeah, is going to re-inherit the lead of this Grand Prix team on us in now, of course. Uh, Gasly into P2. Verstappen P3. Bottas fourth and Danny Kvyat out fifth. We should comfortably come out ahead though. Uh, comfortably come out ahead of the midfield though with a bit of luck 2.1 go getting gear come on that's so frustrating but cost us definitely a few tenths team's still saying one more stop in the strategy that is definitely not right as we head back out of the pit lane make sure we don't run wide as we are just about going to come out ahead still of Charles Leclerc who's the front of the midfield what is the gap to the front runners 8 seconds to Danny Kvyat about 13 then I'm going to guess to George Russell Let's get it. So yeah, Gasly, 106.9 at the end of that lap. So clearly the top two now, they've got past Verstappen. Starting to break away a little bit. Is it teams like our teammates now locked into battle with Valtteri Bottas? We go purple through the final two sectors, though. Surely now there's going to be a fastest lap on the table that none of those guys will be able to beat. 
don't really need the bonus point, but we'll take it if we can. There we go, Gasly, another fastest, a 1067 that time round. So Gasly is already flying at this stage of the day. Is he going to be able to challenge George Russell? We, though, a 1058. Yeah, that that's that's in another league at the moment, and we are taking a lot of time at Danny Kvyat and Bottas. Still taking about a second a lap out of the guys in front of us here, so this could get really, really close towards the end of the Grand Prix between Gasly, Russell and myself. Of course, that does also rely on us getting past Bottas, Kvyat and our teammate Verstappen quite quickly. Confirmed. Team is still saying two stop, but not really too sure why. Come on, just get the DRS on Danny Kvyat. I think we have just about, which is really, really important in this Grand Prix. Less than ten to go now here from Sao Paulo and we are closing in still on the back of the podium places. Team still want us in the end of this lap. Tyres do feel fine at the moment. Oh, that's not the right line through there though. Also not the right gear which hasn't helped us. A bit sloppy through the first couple of turns but yeah, nine to go here from Brazil. And at the very least a podium is still on the table but I'm hoping for more. Right now can we get a run at Jung Sao on Danny Kvyat? Maybe we'll see Bottas get a bit of a run on our teammate as well. Though the gap about four tenths of a second. As we get in towards the DRS zone there with the Alpha Tari, a mighty fast car down the straights. And you can see that there, really not taking much time at all out of him. As we head back down in towards turn one. Oh, a lot of curb through there. Really going to have to make the difference up through the twisty bits by the looks of it. Can we try and get another good run on Danny Kvyat? This time around he's going a bit defensive on us. Might have a bit of a look. Oh, look out. Early, the Alpha Tauri breaks down the hill. Oh, don't want to be out there. Where are we off? That's not where we want to be. That was all a bit scary. Might try and get round in through the twisty bits, though. I know we've got a lot of extra grip. It's where the Alpha Tauri tends to struggle a bit more. Straight line speed. That thing is a weapon. Through the corners, though, we've definitely still got a clear cut advantage, especially with these tyres, but just a bit of wheel spin. Gonna cost us this time round, as we might just be overdriving the car a little bit to try and get round him. A lot of understeer as we head back down the hill. Can we get anything done this time round? We'll be all over the back of him again. A little bit of wheel spin. We're a couple of tenths closer though. So we try and sit right under the gearbox of the Alpha Tauri out of the final corner. Pretty much run out of overtake mode though. We'll use a final splash as we head up towards the line. We'll have a look up the inside. And we're comfortably now in front of Danny Kvyat. A clear and decisive move in this Grand Prix. Seven to go. We're up into fifth. Right, can we now get close enough to Bottas to go for anything? He's obviously going to get carried along by the slipstream from our teammate. But we do get right under the gearbox once again. A Valtteri Bottas are even closer to him than we were to Kvyat at Jung Sao. Can we see what the Mercedes top end speed is like? Doesn't seem to be as good as the Alfa Tauri is. So Bottas under pressure is going to go defensive on us. We'll have a look around the outside. Oh, very, very close to contact there. We get the inside for turn two. We'll slam the door. And we'll be up into fourth. Maybe as well. We've just given Verstappen a bit of clear air and a bit of breathing room to Bottas behind. The gap now over one second. But we need to get past Maxi Boy. One point today. Max Verstappen was leading this Grand Prix and we were in last place. Unfortunately though, it just doesn't seem like our teammates quite got what it takes at the moment. As he's actually going to get some DRS off the Haas cars in front. There goes Nick De Vries, A little bit in the way. We head back down towards turn one. He's going to get even more DRS off Magnussen. Yeah, the Haskell's battling each other comfortably. The slowest car at the moment in this series. Magnussen does peel off the race in line, though. Can we get a run on Verstappen as well? Oh, a little bit of contact with our teammate, but we somehow split up through the middle. And we're up now into P3 of this Grand Prix. Russell seems to be struggling. Gasly's up into the lead by a good couple of seconds. So he might have just sat around, watched Russell and Verstappen battle, and has then pounced when they're both getting weaker towards the end. We might be able to get Russell, but I think Gasly might just be a bit too far up the road. Two laps to go then here from Interlagos, and Russell seems to be trying to up the pace just a little bit again to try and hold on. I wonder if once Gasly got past him, he backed off, and then the team have just said, obviously I'm up now behind him. He needs to try and push the chequered flag. It's all just getting a bit out of shape through turn one and turn two again. 1.4. If we can get some DRS on in this lap, we might be able to make a move work right towards the chequered flag. We've had some brilliant drag race finishes around this track in the past. Could today be another one of those? 
Not quite able to get the DRS on Draw Drossel this time round, but the gap is still coming down just a little bit. Like I said, if we can get within sort of six tenths, I want to say, as we head out of Jung Sao on this final lap, we might be able to go for something, but we need to absolutely nail this lap if we want to try and get close enough through turn one and turn two, using as much curb as we dare. But Russell here, I think, is using everything in his battery as well to try and keep the gap as high as he possibly can. It looks like Gasly is going to make it two wins in the last five Grand Prix this season. He really has come alive in that Alpha Tari at last. Something is clicking for that team, but I don't think we're quite going to be able to get close enough to Russell at the very end of this one. There's a couple more lap cars in the way. Thought there were some yellow flags there, but nothing apparently on the mini-map. So we just head through. Yeah, look at that. Russell, the gap's starting to open up again. I think we've just taken too much out of these tyres with one to go here. And the combination of that and everyone else using everything they've got left in the car as well has just made this impossible at the end of the day. Starting right from the very back this time round. It looks like Pierre Gasly is going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix there. GG's to him and Alpha Tauri. George Russell, P2. We come through for P3. Right from the very back. We'll take it. Russell snags fast his lap at the end. That's a little bit annoying. Yes, yes, yes. We're on the podium. Good job this weekend. Great drive. Thank you. Another superb Brazilian Grand Prix comes to an end. And it's a thoroughly deserved victory. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. And it's time now for the podium celebrations and how well deserved is this one? This is a team all about giving talented young drivers an opportunity to race and to win. Alpha Tori are your winners here today. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. The Constructors' Championship may be a foregone conclusion at the moment, but regardless, let's look at the standings. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Brazilian Grand Prix. And like we said, it's Pierre Gasly from fourth on the grid. Really did finesse the strategy here today to come home with the dub there. Like I said, I think he just watched Russell and Verstappen duke it out for so long. And obviously, they'd just taken too much out of their tyres, too much out of the battery. Gasly swooped in, took the lead, and never really looked back in this Grand Prix there. George Russell, 1.8 behind him. We were just less than four seconds back at the end of the day there. But yeah, Russell snagged the fastest lap back away from me by less than a tenth right at the end of the Grand Prix there. Verstappen comes through for fourth ahead of Bottas and Kvyat. Obviously, your top three teams there making up your top six. Lando Norris, best of the rest, though. A good job done by him ahead of Esteban Ocon. Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc rounding out your top ten there. Charles was looking strong, and that's going to be a bitter blow for Ferrari as they desperately need title points heading into the final race of the year there. Albon down in 11th, I'm sure a bit gutted with that from sixth on the grid there. He seemed to be really strong in qualifying, uh, but he didn't have the same race pace there. No DNFs, though. Rather surprisingly, you can see the rest of your finishes on your screens. Championship-wise, though, of course, 407 points now for ourselves. With that good result, Verstappen does re-jump Valtteri Bottas. One point separating those two drivers in towards the final race of the year. Gasly could get P2 overall in this if he absolutely finesses the final race of the championship. And Russell has a few woes there. 13 points the gap, so he'd need the win with fastest lap and Russell to finish fourth, which is very plausible. And Gasly could finish up runner-up uh, this year there. Further down the order, any other movers? I guess Ocon could jump Danny Kvyat as well. There, he'd need a bit of a miracle or by basically need a Kvyat retirement to stand any chance of doing that there. But I think Verstappen Bottas is a big bottle, uh, battle to watch out for. Uh, further down, though, I guess, I mean, you could see some jumps in the midfield if someone gets a big result as well. They're down towards the rear 
of your field, though. It seems like that one point from Nicholas Satifi in Australia is going to be critical come the end of the year there. Constructors-wise, McLaren get the jump on Renault. That is another battle you want to watch out for in the final race of the year. Two points separating those two teams. That one is going to be fun to watch. Ferrari, if they got a miracle, uh, they might be able to finish P7 or P6, but it looks like it's going to be quite possibly, I think, their worst championship finish since two, uh, 1980. Eighth place is is not where Ferrari should be in the world of Formula One. There, 91 points isn't a bad haul, but yeah, eighth place is just simply not good enough for Marinello there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well. Like I said, the driver vote for our final teammate for season six is currently open, so make sure you make uh, make sure obviously you get your votes in as well. That will of course close in a few days' time uh, when we get to Abu Dhabi. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys ready for the finale of Season 5 from the Middle East. We'll be back very, very soon for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.